I have owned the Katabatic Gear Palisade 30 degree down sleeping quilt for almost a year now. I've really put it through its paces. I've hiked hundreds of miles in it, so it's about time I gave you guys my full review. Let's go. Most of you here in the UK may not have heard about Katabatic Gear. They are a small American-based company based in Denver, Colorado. They make everything from sleeping quilts just like this one to backpacks and bivy bags. Uh, they're all made out of ultralight, durable, and really high quality materials. This is the Katabatic Gear 30 degree Fahrenheit down sleeping quilt. Because I bought this in the US, it cost $405 uh, plus $61 shipping, which is a whopping $466. In British pounds, this is £355.47 plus a staggering £40 customs charge when it arrived at my end here. So let's just have a really good in-depth look at this uh, and see if it's worth the money. When you buy this out of the box, it comes very neatly folded in a cellophane bag and also in the box you get this really little tiny stuff sack. It's really great for packing it down really small but not so good if the sleeping quilt is damp in any way, shape or form. Instead of this, what I like to use is my HMG uh, Dyneema pod which is much bigger. It's much easier to pack the sleeping quilt down into and it keeps it much, much drier. It also fits very, very well in the bottom of my HMG backpack which it's designed to do. With the stuff sack that it comes with, do not store it in this for more than 24 hours, uh, especially if the down sleeping quilt is damp. Uh, because it just won't uh, keep the loft of the insulation that's inside. As well as this, in the box it also comes with a very large Katabatic Gear branded uh, storage sack. This storage sack is perfect for storing the sleeping quilt uh, between hikes for long periods of time. I actually made the mistake of storing my sleeping quilt in the tiny stuff sack here uh, for about a week or so and I emailed Katabatic Gear to see if it was okay and they said it's absolutely fine so long as the sleeping quilt is dry. They also said please do not do that again uh, so that was a little bit of an issue there. Also in the box as well as this it comes with these removable webbing straps and what they're for is for attaching it to like a Neo Air x -Lite sleeping uh, mattress which makes it very very handy in the cold weather so that you can actually wrap the entire sleeping quilt around your body and uh, keep yourself extremely warm. When you order this sleeping quilt it's also possible to choose the size and the fill of the sleeping quilt which is absolutely fantastic. When I went online to buy this I chose the 6 foot 900 fill power hyper dry uh, goose down. It is a little bit more expensive but this sleeping quilt is comfortable down to freezing temperatures. Also the hyper dry goose down uh, is treated so that in more humid climates this sleeping quilt will actually stay drier for longer. It will also retain its loft a lot more efficiently but this is definitely not a waterproof down sleeping quilt by any means. But I knew I would be using this in Indonesia when I travelled there last year, uh, so a little bit more on that later. The outer shell material is an ultralight Pertex quantum ripstop material, which is supposedly downproof, but it's extremely light, very thin and very durable. Also, the down is ethically sourced in these sleeping bags and you can actually go on their website after you've ordered, put the order number in and you can track where your down is coming from, which I think is really amazing for a company to do that, especially a company that really prides itself in the materials that it uses. Okay, let's talk about the specs of this sleeping bag. It weighs 496 grams, which is 17 and a half ounces, so it's super, super light. The pack size when it's in this really tiny stuff sack is just 13 centimeters by 25 centimeters, so it's absolutely tiny. These are just incredible numbers for such a warm sleeping quilt. Really, really good. Okay, now I've gone over some of the specs and the features. It's time to talk about some of the things I really liked, and especially some of the things I didn't like so much about this sleeping quilt. Okay, one of my favorite things about this sleeping quilt is that it is so incredibly light. Uh, and it packs down really, really small. This is absolutely perfect for a through hiker's knees, just like myself, uh, because it will fit in a really small backpack. It's ultra lightweight, meaning that you're gonna have a lot less weight on your back and it's gonna take up less room in your backpack. These are qualities that a through hiker just absolutely cannot do without. On the top, it's got a uh, drawstring neck just like this, and it's got a snap button on the top so that you can really lock in the heat around your torso. When this is pulled tight and it's around your neck and snapped shut, it's an incredibly comfortable and really cozy thing to sleep in. One thing I really love about this sleeping quilt is the quality of the materials. They really haven't cut any corners in their choice. 
uh, of what they're going to use to build these things. It's really, really nice. And as far as sleeping quilts go, I would say this is a luxury sleeping quilt. It's really, really good. The quality of the stitching is outstanding. And even though the outer shell material is incredibly thin and light, I felt very confident that this wasn't going to break in the middle of the night or uh, while it was in transit on my back. In general, I much prefer the sleeping quilt design over a mummy sleeping bag because it saves on weight. And in a mummy sleeping bag, especially if it's made of down, uh, all of the down on your back gets unlofted and squished down, so it's completely useless. So because they've saved weight on that and uh, they thought about the design in that way, I really love that for that reason as well. Even though they've got a really large opening on the back to save the weight for that reason, you can actually hook it together with these little hooks uh, to keep you warm at night and you kind of retain a little bit more of the heat that way as well. So that's a good added plus. I also really like that this is uh, a lot more versatile than say a mummy sleeping bag because you can stick an arm out, you can stick a leg out if you get too hot. Uh, you can kind of uh, roll it down to just your torso length or put it above your neck if you're cold. It's also incredibly easy to get into. You just step in, pull it up, pop the button on the back and you're good to go. Another really cool design feature about the Catabatic Gear 30 degree Palisade sleeping quilt is that the baffles are filled with less down at the top around your torso and more so uh, around the toe box, keeping your feet warm. And because your torso gives off more heat, you need less down there as well. And finally, the last thing that I really like about this sleeping quilt, even though it's incredibly thin and light, is that I feel like it's gonna last an incredibly long time for even more hikes in the future, so long as I keep it dry and maintain it. All right, now we've gone over some of the things that I really liked about this sleeping quilt. Let's talk about some of the things that I really didn't like so much. As I said before, the stuff sack is incredibly small and too small in fact. It's really difficult to stuff this thing inside this stuff sack. It takes a really long time and I do feel like if you keep it in there too long, even just 24 hours, it's gonna damage the down inside. It packs down far too tight and it isn't even water resistant like a, uh, like a dry bag because you've got this drawstring thing at the top. What I think Catabatic Gear should do is just make this a little bit bigger and make it like a dry bag and completely watertight so that you have no worries if you're hiking in the rain about your sleeping quilt getting wet. In more humid conditions, it's very important that every day you lay this out to dry in the sun if possible. Uh, I found that while I was traveling around Indonesia that uh, even during the day, um, while I was hiking, this thing, as it was packed in my bag, the humidity in the air would make the down inside lose its loft quite quickly. Even though this is a treated down inside, I would have expected it to lose its loft a lot more slowly than it did in those uh, humid conditions. The thing is, I needed this sleeping bag when I was hiking up Mount Rinjani, because at those elevations, it gets really cold up there. So I didn't want to settle for a synthetic sleeping quilt because I still wanted to save on weight and I still wanted to save on the amount of space that it took up in my backpack. So even though that was one of the downsides, I still wasn't willing to compromise. Another thing that I found quite annoying is that the material inside is exactly the same as the material on the outside. And what that did is in the night while I was sleeping, obviously my body would let off moisture and oils into the backpack. And I found that this material inside got a lot more grubbier and a lot more quickly than I thought it would. I think a different material than the one that they've used inside just to kind of uh, counteract that would have been very beneficial. But then again, all of that does come down to maintenance and keeping your sleeping bag clean. Uh, maybe I could switch to like a sleeping bag liner or something, but I think for these prices out of the box, maybe they could have used a different material. Another thing is, even though they said that the material on this sleeping court is completely downproof, uh, I have actually found uh, one little spot. I don't know if it's something that I've done where I've, where I've punctured it or something like that, but can you see that one? This is one little place where some down is actually coming out. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try and get it focused, but it's actually coming out. It's not even on one of the seams on the baffles. It's actually in the middle of the material. Either I've punctured it or something like that, but I've taken very good care of this sleeping cool. And right out of the box, just like that, I've found an area where uh, some down is coming through. So just keep that in mind. Another thing that I didn't like so much about this sleeping quilt is of course the price. Yes, it is a very high quality product, but a few of the things that I just mentioned that I didn't like so much uh, could have easily been avoided in the manufacturing process. 
So yeah, maybe if they bought the price down and kept it the same, that would be fine for me. And finally, the last thing that I didn't like so much is the fact that I had to wait four weeks for this thing to be delivered. They obviously make them to order, which has its good points, but I feel like the, uh, the configuration of these sleeping quilts could easily be made and stockpiled so that you get it quicker to your door. Overall, this is an incredible sleeping quilt. It offers so much warmth in such a lightweight and durable package. It's just that the price point, along with the dislikes that I just mentioned, make it a little bit less desirable now. Okay, folks, campfire question. Which sleeping quilt do you use and how have you found it so far? Let the Trail Hunter community know in the comments section below. Okay, folks, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. Be sure to watch the videos on my side here and subscribe for more videos like this and I'll see you guys in the next one.